Hi everyone, it's Monday, it's seven o'clock, we're in my studio, that must mean it's time for art school. Today, we're going to be talking all about outsider art, we're going to be taking a look at your homework, we're going to be finding out if art is brilliant or bananas, we're going to play art or fart, and I've got a very special guest for you. This is art school. Hit it, Liam. Art school, it's art school, it's like normal school, but more arty. Because it's art school. Now, one of the really big questions that came out of last week's show was what exactly is art and what isn't art? So I've had a good long think about that and I think it comes down to four things. One of them is, what's the stuff made of? If it's made out of clay or paint, does that make it art because of its actual materials? Maybe, but maybe not, because what if somebody puts paint on a wall or makes something else out of clay that's useful rather than artistic. So the materials doesn't really wash. Maybe it's the context. What if it's in an art gallery or a museum or a curated space? Does that make it an artwork? Maybe, but maybe not. What if it's the toilet roll in the, in the bathroom at the art gallery? Or it's a fan in the corner of the room or a chair? That's not art just because it's in a gallery, is it? So maybe it's to do with the person that makes it, if they class themselves as an artist and they call that thing an artwork, then it's art. Maybe that's what makes it art, but maybe not, because what if somebody makes something and they don't class it as art, but the rest of the world love it and think it's really important and it speaks to them? It's a really, really difficult thing to work out what is art and what isn't art. So I thought this week we'd take an in-depth look are what are called outsider artists. It's not really a phrase I like very much because it tends to pigeonhole artists into a category. Like we've got proper artists and we've got outsider artists. But for the sake of this show, it's interesting to look at them because these are interesting, compelling, marginal figures, human beings that need to express themselves in some kind of way. What tends to unite them is an almost obsessive quality to making and creating. They're the kinds of people that lock themselves away for 50 years and do one thing repeatedly and in a focused way. To me, it's some of the most important and powerful and poignant work out. There's also this link between outsider artists and mental health, i.e. people with mental health problems make this kind of outsider art. And that's a stigma that I'm really keen to break down today because I think an artist is an artist is an artist. Good health, bad health, mental health, physical health, it's all the same thing. But when, uh, when outsider art first came about, it was definitely linked to an exploration of the creative output of people who were mentally unwell. Now, I know from my own struggles with anxiety that creativity really, really helps me. And I've set up a fund with Mind um, the mental health charity in England and Wales to fund creative therapies throughout England and Wales. So I'm not dismissing the healing potential of art. But the, we're not going to go there today. We're going to talk about something else. And I want to draw very quickly on Jean de Buffet, who was an artist who first showed outsider art way back in 1949. And de Buffet made a really powerful and important statement. And I think this helps all of us. He said that... Um, these divergent groups of artists have one unifying trait, and that is a raw quality that's untouched by academic rules or current trends. And that's the kind of art that I think is really important. So, without further ado, and thinking of all of those things, let's play Art or Fart. Art or Fart, Art or Fart. <laughs> Okay, so this is the part of the show where you guys tell me if what we're looking at is art or if it's fart. Now, bearing in mind, we were thinking before about the context of something, what it was made out of, and who made it. Let's have a look at the first piece. So, the very first piece that Imran's brought in today is this one. And this here is a can of beans. Now... Is this can of beans a work of art or not? What do you think? It's been signed on the back 
So that could be a clue that it's a piece of art. I don't know. Or is it just a tin of beans? The second piece we have is, oh, let me get it, is this one here. This is a painting of Mr. Bean. So it's a painting of Mr. Bean. So do you think Mr. Bean, a painting of Mr. Bean, is that art or is it fart? And a tin of beans signed by somebody, is it art or is it fart? And the last one on the subject of beans is this one here, which is a photograph of Anish Kapoor's bean in Chicago. Now, what we need to decide is which one's art and which one's fart. So, looking at the beans, um, what do we reckon? Is it art or is it fart? Katie, you say it's fart. Okay, it might be. Um, what about Mr. Bean? Is that art or fart? Art? Everyone thinks it's art. Is it definitely art? Sarah, you think it's art? Okay, and the last one, Anish Kapoor's Bean sculpture in Chicago. Is it art or is it fart? Art? You all think it's art? Okay, so <laughs> it's time to tell you. So basically, the tin of beans is in fact nothing but fart. <laughs> it's a big old fart because it's actually signed by my mum and she knows nothing about art. Well, she might do but um, she's not an artist. This one, Mr. Bean, is it art or is it fart? I think you're right, it's art. And this one, this one here, this is Anish Kapoor's Bean. Is it art or is it fart? You lot thought it was art, but it's by Anish. I can say it's fart, it's my show, it's fart. <laughs> so that was it, that was art or fart. Oh, there's somebody at the door. 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 It's got to be someone amazing because there's somebody at the door. Who's the special guest this week? Should we find hey. Emma? <laughs> this is Emma Laval. Hi. Thank That's you for coming. Me. For me? Yes. Oh, wow, Emma. Thank you. It's a piece for my Ronin shrine. Should we put it over there? Yep, somewhere special. Where should we put it? Do you want to do it? Oh, OK. Um, I think sort of there. Yeah. Because then it's kind of mirroring that one. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, so before we get down to business, yeah. I thought we'd make a cake together. We'll decorate this beautiful cake together. But first of all, let's take a look at some of the art you've made. Okay. Emma is an extremely private artist. For many years, she went under the pseudonym of Double-Headed Goatfish. She's very open about her mental health issues. She suffers from bipolar and tends to question that and try and understand that through making her art, which spans a whole spectrum of choreography, improvisation. She collects things and creates images. We're extremely lucky to have her. You won't find her on Twitter or Facebook, but we've got her here. Everybody say hello to Emma. Okay, so Emma, thank you. Okay. So, shall we have a go at decorating this cake? Yes, I would like to use that. You want to use that? Do you want to get going with it? Yeah. So what are we going for here? Um, well, something kind of like emerging from the centre. Yeah, I like it. That's good. So we could start. Um, mm -hmm. Should we start there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that looks ridiculous. Should, should we put an owl? Can I owl it? Oh, definitely owl That's it. That's a hoot. Let's owl it. Um, <laughs> that looks brilliant. So, look, well, I was just, um, I've been spending the week sort of looking at your work. Yeah. And um, thinking about the huge variety of things that you make. Yes. And um, one of the things that, um, well, people love your hair. <laughs> we could talk about your hair. <laughs> but, um, Katie thinks it's brilliant. Well, my little things. Yeah, they're so cute. Um, but no, I was thinking like a lot of people sort of tie mental health into your work. Yes. And your, you know, is it fair to say struggles with bipolar? Um, yeah. Um, like a lot of people who with uh, mental distress or mental health issues, you tend to pick up like a little carrier bag of sure. things as you go along. So you can start out like having bipolar and not get diagnosed and then you get like anxiety and insomnia mm. and then, you know, you have mm. a carrier bag. Sure. So, I mean, in terms of the work that you make then, I mean, it, you know, I think it's interesting because people talk about artists with mental health issues yeah. or art as a way of like healing some sort of mental health problem. 
But for you, you've been making art since you were a very young child. It's part of your almost DNA as a human being to make this oh stuff. Oh, yeah, completely. So it's do you see yourself as an artist or like a mentally unwell artist? I'm an artist. Yeah, right, OK. <laughs> I'm That's an artist. That's the point. Exactly, and I think we all are. So, yeah. I mean, this is the point. I think whether you're a postman or a builder or an artist or a painter or a dancer, Yeah. If you, you know, you, you, you're just as likely to have things that you kind of want to express in an artistic way. And it kind of isn't prejudiced like that, do you know what I mean? I really believe that everyone has that artist in them. Yeah. That it's not just... And I can make art for anyone and about anything. It doesn't have to be about uh, mental health. Sure. I, obviously, it's going to be there yeah. because it's part of who I am. Sure. So it's going to feed into the work because mm -hmm. you feed into your work. Yeah, and what, what do you think about this idea of like outsider artists then that like for instance some people are kind of real artists and some people are outside artists and maybe someone who makes something in their bedroom with dolls or whatever isn't real art i kind of think it's a bit silly you think it's silly why well i think all these like definitions and these different categories if you make art you make art if you think you're an artist you're an artist sure. um it have a it has a kind of place it's mm. not completely silly, like, you know, it has exposed a lot of people who wouldn't, you know, the whole outside art scene. Sure. But, like, outside in, the organisation um, mm. that I and many other people are part of, it's called outside in, but they don't call any of the artists outsider artists. They're mm. just artists. Sure. So. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's right. I mean, I, I just don't think... It sort of makes this hierarchy, though, like some people are more able to make art than other people, and yeah. some art is more valid than other art, and at the end of the day, just making stuff's important, and yeah. we should all be doing it. Making stuff, being yourself, being creative. Okay, brilliant. So, there's the cake. Absolutely gorgeous. Emma, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you, Stuart. Okay, oh. and thanks for my thing for the Ronin try. I know, you're completely welcome. Okay, <laughs> everybody, care. Emma Lavelle, Bye. check out her work, see the stuff she makes, she's absolutely awesome. Right. Unfortunately, though, not everybody in the art world is as awesome as Emma. There's some serious rotteration going on. So, when we're talking about rotterists, it has to be time for the art world's smelliest rotters! They're smelly and they're rotten. They're the smelly rotters. Okay, so, last week... We had a look at some smelly rotters. We looked at these couple of old, old dudes and this bloke at the top here, Anish Kapoor. He's currently the leader in the rotterist stakes. But who have we got this week on our situation? Well, Anish is number one, but we've got this guy. Now, let me tell you about this bloke. This is Walter Sickert. And... Um, and uh, Walter Sickert was born in Germany and he painted a lot... He was actually bimbling around London at the same time as Jack the Ripper. He painted a lot of prostitutes, that kind of thing. He was thought of as a Camden painter. Um, some people even thought that Walter Sickert was actually Jack the Ripper himself. It's never been proven. So for now, I think we'll put him here. Where it works is, um, if you think he should go up, say Sickert up. If you think he should go down, say Sickert down. Now, the next person is this bloke. This is Charles Bronson. Now, he's earned his reputation as the most violent prisoner in Britain. And his fearsome status has even spawned a film based on his life called Bronson. Yet, despite this bloke's dark character, Bronson who's covenantly serving life at Wakefield Prison, he likes to show off his artistic side. He is an artist. He's even changed his surname to Salvador after his favourite artist. Oh, isn't that sweet? Dr Eggman. Um, he's made a huge number of paintings, drawings and poetry while serving at Her Majesty's Pleasure. And his work has won countless awards, it's been exhibited all over the world, it's even fetched thousands of pounds when it's been sold under the hammer at auction. So, do we think he's that much of a rotter? Right at the top? What? Right at the top? Are you sure? Worse than Anish? Right at the top? All right, right at the top. I'll put him over the poo at the top, shall I? Serious rotterism. Now, this bloke, if you don't know this guy, last up is this guy, John Myatt. 
Now, he's probably known as the perpetrator of the biggest art fraud in history. What he'd do is he'd go along to Birmingham Art Gallery, he'd have a good look at the art there, you know, whether it was by Monet or whatever, and then he'd come back and he'd actually make, with acrylics and a bit of KY jelly, a fake Monet that no one had seen before. Now, he's put 200 of these on the art market and all sorts of people have bought them. Um, he's done a year in prison and now he's got a TV show where he teaches you how to paint like um, experts. So that's really interesting. What? What? There's somebody at the door. Who is it? Sorry. Is it the health and safety? What are you joking? Just be quiet. I think he might have gone. I think it's all right. Okay. I don't know what he was doing with the KY Nige. I, I think it was basically just to add sort of texture or whatever. I mean, I don't think Monet was using that stuff, but who knows? I wouldn't want to speculate. Um, so, okay, Katie, we'll leave Charles Bronson at the top, but I'm not sure if he's worse than Kapoor, to be honest. But So what do we think? Is that a good kind of order? Charles at the top, White in the middle, and Sickert kind of down there? I mean, I don't even know what Sickert's supposed to have done, to be honest. Like, he might be Jack the Ripper. I mean, it's a bit dubious. I, I mean, can I put him right at the bottom? Does anyone object? It's time for Brilliant or Bananas. And the way this works is you tell me whether you think this artist is Brilliant or Bananas. He's one of my personal faves. Check him out. Brilliant or Bananas, Bananas or Brilliant, Brilliant or Bananas. This guy, Kenny Irwin, is an absolute hero of mine. Since he was a child, he's been having these epic dreams about robots and alternate realities and that kind of thing. He's been making these incredible animatronic installations in his dad's back garden out in Palm Springs. He's filled up nearly every square inch of the two acres of land. He's made microwave land, robot land, and every Christmas he covers this thing in six and a half million lights. Is this guy brilliant or is this guy absolutely bananas? You tell me. Okay, so what do you guys think? I mean, personally, I absolutely love his work. I think anybody going to that extreme is absolutely brilliant. So what do we think? Is he brilliant or, what, or is he bananas? What was that? They think he's brilliant? I think he's brilliant. Yeah, Katie, I agree with you. Yeah, Sarah, I agree. So, so Liam, let's run the barometer. Gareth Gates. It's brilliant. Okay, so it's obviously Brilliant! Oh my gosh! It's the... What? It's not bananas! Mate, 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 it's not bananas. It's not bananas. Look, come on, come on, come back here, sit on the step. It's not bananas! It's not bananas! It's not bananas! It's not actually bananas! Oh god. It wasn't bananas! Okay, so... Basically, I've compiled, what is he doing? I've actually compiled a, a list of my three favourite outsider artists. At number three, it's Henry Darger. Darger was born way back in 1892, and he was a reclusive hospital janitor and a dishwasher, but he led a secret life. Unknown to anybody, he was a prolific visual artist and actually an epic novelist too. His vast collection of creative work wasn't discovered until 1972 when his two-bed apartment in Chicago was cleared shortly before his death. They found over 350 watercolours, pencil drawings, collages and carbon trace drawings, as well as seven typewritten hardbound books, thousands of bundled sheets of typewritten text, numerous journals, ledgers, scrapbooks, etc. He had a terrible start to his life. He became an orphan at just the age of five and he was put into a home for simple children. Now, he managed to escape from there as a teenager when he was 19, but those experiences certainly fed through into his later art. At number two, we have Madge Gill. She had a horrible start to her life too. In 1882, she was born into a fatherless home, and at the age of nine, she was sent away to an orphanage because her grandfather was embarrassed that there wasn't a bloke about. 
the orphanage sent her across to Canada to start work as a maid. When she finally made it back to England, she started drawing and she created thousands of what she called mediumistic works. Most were done in black and white. The works came in all sorts of sizes from postcards to huge works on fabric that were like 30 feet long. She claimed that she was guided by an inner spirit called my inner rest and she often signed her works with that name. She died in 1961, but she's still seen as one of the most influential outsider artists of all time. At number one, my absolute favorite is Calvin and Ruby Black. This married couple started building Possum Trot Fantasy Doll Show back in 1954. And it was an attraction to lure tourists off the main highways and into their small rock shop in Possum Trot, which is in California. Now, Possum Trot very quickly became this couple's absolute artistic obsession. Calvin himself went and carved over 80 dolls and each represented someone who was really important in his life. Meanwhile, Ruby made clothes for each of the dolls and Calvin built this bird cage theatre thing to install the doll players and they performed and they sang and they had voices that were recorded by the husband and his wife. Now their animated displays were of course designed to attract as well as entertain the visitors and people were encouraged to make donations to these dolls. They'd put these little cups in front of each doll and you'd put money in there and they would use the money for that specific doll's makeup and perfume. I think they're absolutely awesome. So those were my top three favourite of all time outsider artists. Okay, so welcome back. Now this is the bit of the show where we take a look at your homework and see what we've been sent in. This is the bit where we answer your questions. It's time for the crit. It's time for the crit. Oh my goodness me, Christ on a bike. Saffron has sent in this amazing piece and she's used a different style than usual. It's Jesus Christ on Facebook. And um, she says that she thinks she may lose some friends over it. Saffron, listen, they're not real friends. If they don't like what you're making and don't like you expressing yourself, then I think it might be time for you to move on. But it's a beautiful piece. Thank you for sending it in. We'll send you some Culture Hustle vouchers as a thank you. Thank you for sharing it. Now, next up, we have an incredible piece by Nigel Fairbrother. In response to last week's show, which if you remember, it was all about censorship and freedom of expression. Here we have Her Majesty herself as a reader's wife. Nigel, these are absolutely amazing. I'd love to see a whole series of those. What an awesome exhibition it'll be. This is really, really, really funny. Okay, so, so we've been talking all about outsider art, making things with different stuff, different materials. So get outside your comfort zone, stick things together that you wouldn't normally make art with, make something weird, make something wonderful, get outside your comfort zone, make something amazing, send it in to artschool at stuartsemple.com. Include any questions that you want for us to try and answer on the show next week, and we'll have a little chat about your work, and it will be absolutely amazing. So that's about it. All we've got time for now is to answer your questions. So let's see what we've been asked. Oh, right. Here we go. I've got 60 seconds to answer your questions. Sophie, if I do a poo in a gallery, is it art? Well, uh, are you an artist? And do you call it art? In which case it might be Jenny. Can I do a high school episode for you? Oh, I don't see why not. I'll have a think about it. Justin, can animals create art too? Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, if we call it art, there's famous monkeys that make art, isn't there? Um, Katie, how do you deal with copyright? That's a really big question, Katie. We need a whole episode. I'm sorry. Um, I'll paint your car. Tim, we're out of time. Oh. Cause I'm a sad, sad post team Caught up in the love machine No dream concrete Walking like a zombie Like a zombie And I'm a cold train Fast lane Caught up in the Oh, what? No Complete like stitch up Um, oh no Like a zombie Okay, um, Liam, Liam Can you turn it off? Look, everyone, thanks for joining me. I'll be back next week, 7 o'clock, right here on...
Instagram, on Facebook, um, for more art school. I love you all. Thank you very much. I hate this lot. Art school, it's art school. It's like normal school, but more arty, cause it's art school. Oh my goodness.